It was announced today that the miners of Abernant have decided not to appeal against the closure of their colliery, and like their colleagues in the Lady Windsor pit, they've decided to accept British college redundancy terms. Bob Humphreys now reports from Blind Garrow on the impact of pit closures on a valley's community. Abernant colliery in the Swansea Valley, the latest in a long line of South Wales pits to receive the death sentence. In the three years since the miners' strike ended, 14 pits have been closed. The next to go will be the Lady Windsor Colliery in the Cunnan Valley. The 825 miners face a choice, either transfer to another pit or leave the industry. Until two years ago, this was the site of a pit. 600 men worked here. The Garu Falda, they say, was one of the best collieries in South Wales. It was also the heart of the Garu Valley above Bridgend, with a hundred years of history behind it. Today there's nothing, a desolate stretch of rat-infested wasteland strewn with rubble. The colliery buildings have been knocked down, nothing has been put in their place. For the miners who left the industry when the Garu shut, there was some compensation, redundancy payments, in some cases as much as £35,000. The average was £20,000. It's very short little Dutch act. So, uh, it looks nice. It is nice. But when you've got to use it, it's not nice. It's only nice if you can keep it. I'd give it all back, just for him to be underground. Definitely. As far as I was concerned, it was 30 uh, pieces of silver. Or, but I honestly wish I could have given it all back. Because, I, as I said, I didn't want the money. I wanted him to have a job. Berwyn Howells and Nye Davis, two ex-miners who share nearly 80 years underground at the Garrow. Now Nye's house looks out on a pit that's become a dumping ground. For Nye and Berwyn, all that's left of the pit they worked in are the memories they've stored away. They're still supposed to be in control of it, you know? That's right. Uh, Where exactly would the, the shaft itself have been, Darwin? Over there. Ah, there's one Just there. Just below there. See the, see ah, the buffers really? the other side? Yeah. Well, they were for the stones and for the old in the shaft. What would this area have been? All pitted bars and the office. The other pit, of course, was over the other side. That was the upcast. Upcast and downcast, eh? This is the downcast, that was the upcast there. It's a funny thing, they, they, uh, they were so eager to pull the thing down, they did it in 11 days. They filled the whole of the shaft in in 11 days. They left everything down there. There wasn't a thing brought up. All the transformers, every bit of machinery, good machinery, all left down there. It's all buried down there. Buried it, down, down there, down. with a load, with a lot of coal which is still left there, yeah. and a plenty and plenty of reserves in the pit. Yeah. Why wasn't that machinery brought up? Well, the, we did... Uh, try to get a cooperative go into work the pit. And it is my suspicion only, mind, <laughs> that when this got to the notice of uh, British Coal, that uh, I think they were frightened that we could do a better job than them. And they filled it in 11 days. You've got a suspicious <laughs> mind. <laughs> well, I mean, they never did it to any other pit. They did it to this one. So, you know, it's a balance of probabilities. <laughs> a lot of your life was spent here. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, and I in the four pits myself. I started down there's 14 and one week old. Uh -huh. 14 and one week? Yeah. What were you taking home then? 12 and 9 pence. 12 and 9 pence? 12 and 9 pence. And I started here in 1938 uh -huh. and I was taking home 14 and 11 pence. Uh -huh. 12 and 9 pence I took home. Uh -huh. That's the wages at uh -huh. the time. And, uh... Does it make you sad looking out, seeing it like this? It... It saddens me personally not because there's no pit there, but because there's no work there for the young people to go to. Like, we had the privilege of going, if I had the privilege of working underground, but we had a job. Yes, I see. We, we could hold our head out, you know. 
We were taking a wage home. And you can't take wages home from a place like this. There's nothing there for the young people. I'll be fighting the people by burning the NCB flag right in front of them. And this is all the contempt that they want to have and they should have. Christmas 1985. Just a few months after the end of the year-long strike, the National Coal Board closed the Garu pit. Once Blangaru had four pits, 2,000 men underground. Three trains a day used to bring miners up the valley. Now, the last of those pits has gone. It was devastating, heartbreaking. I was a bars attendant there. I could have st stayed on for another six to eight weeks. But when I seen my mates going through the gates, I just said no, and I went through the gates with them. A uh, couple of months after, I went up the colliery, and I seen the bars, which I'd loved. I loved my job. I'd seen where the shaft were all battered down to the ground. And I'd be quite honest, they were, and my wife will tell her, I were tears in my eyes. Devastating. Devastating and always When he was coming down, the men was coming down the street, I had tears, I got to come in. I had tears in my eyes. Because there's millions of tons of coal left under that pit, pit there. Millions. Because I know of districts that was worked under the old ocean company. They didn't have the, the mechanic of what was going at the time now. They couldn't, they had done boring and all going into the, for the top, but it was too hard that the old ocean company left it there. And it's about three miles of coal, six foot, rock top, rock bottom, and I'd have been touched. I knew there was nothing left for me. I had two sons, and I knew there was nothing left for them. And it was harder for the feelings of myself and my two sons than actually it was for me because I knew they had nowhere to go to. Their only skill was working in a quarry. They didn't know how to put any other job. They couldn't do bricky work. They couldn't do carpentry work. They couldn't do plastering work. Their skill was a quarry. And in the quarry, they were skilled. For many of the men who finished, it was the end of their working lives. For the first few months, you were shot at. You, know, you didn't know what to do. You know, after um, 31 years in a pit like that, that's that's your life, isn't it? At 46 and a half I was then when I finished. You know? I knew there was no like out of a job because three and a half million unemployed, like it? I tried. I failed. For the people, the closing of the Garrow pit robbed the valley of much of its spirit. And everybody seems to be so separated, nobody's the togetherness have gone. You know, the comradeship have gone, the, the men have all split up into different jobs and uh, it's just not that you don't see the men coming home from work, you know, you're waving to everybody, you know, when you go shopping and things and I don't know, the atmosphere isn't the same up here at all. Keith Richards was one of the Garrow miners who decided the coal board had made an offer he couldn't refuse. He took redundancy and a cheque for £25,000. It sounded a lot, although £7,000 immediately went paying off debts that had built up during the strike. He'd hoped to find new work quickly. In a valley where there are 33 unemployed for every job offered, that wasn't easy. The money is a big catch, and it'll catch everybody. If it's there, uh, people take money, you know, whatever, whatever the consequences, you don't think of the consequences when you've got a, that amount of money sitting in front of you. And hopefully are young enough, if the boys are, you know, thinking they're young enough to get jobs. But, you know, that everybody knows what the job scene is like outside. And most of the boys haven't got any qualifications whatsoever to just underground work. That's all they know. How did you react to the money, Carol? The amount of it, £25,000? I didn't want it. You didn't want no. it? No. I wanted him in a... In jo in a it's a cure job, you know. And he was in the Wyndham pit for 20 years and then he was transferred to the Garo. He was there for about five months and then they went on strike. He was there a couple of months and then the pit closed. And to me, I'd rather a man have a self-respect and have a job. 
The miners who decided to stay in the industry after Garu closed now travel down the valley every day to pick up a bus that'll take them to Lady Windsor Colliery. When that shuts, they face either more travelling or getting out altogether. Steve, what are you going to do now when Lady Windsor shuts? I'll finish. Why finish? You could transfer, could you? I could transfer, but I've, uh, I've had enough now. Enough? Yeah. Well, I've had uh, another travelling. Oh, 70 miles a day, and uh, I just get out of it. How long a day does all that travelling make it? Well, we're out the house about 11 hours a day. I'm working seven and a quarter hours. What about the lump sum payout? What will that mean to you? Well, it won't mean, mean uh, a great lot, but uh, it'll be an help to see me through again another job. Gareth, what do you plan to do when Lady Windsor shuts? Well, uh, obviously I'll try to look for a job around the Pigeon area. But if that's not uh, feasible, I'll uh, sit back and see what comes along. But uh, I intend to finish because of the travelling and basically the management, the way they've run on the pit and that. And, uh, I do intend to get out of the pit. Yeah. What's your plans now when Lady Windsor shuts? Take redundancy. Uh, try and find another job. I'm hoping you know, I'm looking around like and a bit, uh, bit optimistic about you know the future of the world war. That's why I'm going out. You know, they're treating us uh well, we've got to travel 70 miles a day. I had a bit of a gut sore, like you know, going back and forth all the time and getting up in the morning. I don't think there is a future no more. Yeah. I think you know, I've been in the uh, well, I've been in Wyndham Western, I've been in Garrow Fowler, I've been in Abbott Curran, and now I'm in Lady Windsor and the same old story. I don't think there's a future in the mining industry anymore in South Wales. I think before long, in the next couple of years, there'll be another four or five gone. And say in five years, you'd be lucky if you've got three or four mines left in South Wales. So what are you going to do now when Lady Windsor shuts? Are you going to transfer? No, I'm taking redundancy. I've had enough. I'm getting out. I don't think the money will be around again. I worried if I, fi if I finish, I'm going to take the money, whether I get another job or not. No. I don't fancy taking a chance. I'd rather stay in the industry. I know I've got a job and just take my chances. Like, How hard do you think it would be to get another job in the Garrow Valley? I think it'd be quite hard myself. There are jobs going, but the money's no good. and you know, There's so many out of work as well. So that's why you want to stay in the industry. <laughs> John, what are your plans now when uh, Lady Windsor shuts down? Well, I, I'll have to go in the door the same as everybody else. I, I look for a job, I suppose, like in it, but uh, no one around here. There's not much going, is there? Like, so um, as we finish, I expect I'll be on the scrap heap. I will. I'll have to live on the money I got. Like, how old will you be then? Well, I'll be 50 now at the beginning of August. See, and uh, what they tell you down here, if you go down the job centre, 26, you're over the top down here. Like, so uh, you can't see much hope for me. Like. What do you reckon you'll do with the money? Well, I'll finish paying my mortgage off. That's one thing around my, around my neck, like, in it. And, uh, well, they're not going to waste it if they're, you know, like uh, some of the boys have said, well, spend it, go here, go there. They're not going to do that, like, in it. I'm going to try and get it to work for me a little bit, like, in it. I hope uh, I can get a job and then I can beat Maggie Thatcher's policy and I won't have to spend it and I can keep it as a nest egg. But other than that, uh, well, I'll have to live on it, like. Holiday coming up? Well, I might take a little holiday, like, you know, but, uh, that's between me and the wife, like, isn't it? You know, we've got to work that out, like, see? Anyway. But uh, the quicker they shut it, now the better, like. I wish I could go up there today and have my interview and get out there today. I'd be the first to kick my helmet down that pit. 25,000, you've still got to live, you've still got to pay bills. We're not having door at, after a 12 month, but, you know, and 31 pound a week is hard to live on, you know, uh, as far as... Well, we, we had what... We wanted out of the out of the money. We spent our money. We haven't spent it all. We invested money for my daughter, for her wedding. We paid for her to go abroad with her friends. We've been abroad. We've had two good holidays, three good holidays, sorry. And we've done the furniture, fitted kitchen. But, you know, we've spent, we've done what we want. We haven't squandered it. 
One tangible result of the Richards lump sum payment is a new kitchen with all the modern appliances. But with the money came more than they bargained for. It bought goods, but it couldn't buy a job. Having Keith out of work put pressure on the family. We have had our arguments, you know, as uh, not as the money run out. As I say, we've still got a little bit left, money away for the daughter, but we've had our arguments. You know, it's not so much going our own way or anything like that. It's just, well, I've always been out He was losing with, self respect, really. Yeah. You know, he was, well, he just couldn't look at it because he was so depressed, you know. Uh, he thought, oh, give it a couple of months, soon get a job. But the, it was months in, months out, and there was nothing coming along. Keith and changed, did he? Changed, yeah, it's definitely changed. Yeah, very depressed. We've been down the top doctors a couple of times, you know, and but instead of making you know, the money, it, it it broke a lot of families. A lot of families have been divorced through it, you know, because well, the money was just well being squandered most of it, you know, and uh, a lot of pe it all broke a lot of people. Up. You know, families that's happened to. Mm, quite a few. Yeah. Well, the the wives are working all day full time. The husbands are at home, you know. Don't know what to do with themselves, you know. The check did bring their oldest daughter the sort of wedding they never dreamt they'd be able to afford. We working class will never have the money. The lump sum that we've had, you know, and it was really good to say that we put money away for for a wedding and do everything what she wanted, the way she wanted to dress. Whatever she wanted, she asked for, she had. And it was really good, and we had a, well, I wouldn't say a wonderful day, I see a terrific day. <laughs> what about the future now, though, now the money is almost gone? Well, I, th I think we're back, back to normal now. We are just as, well, I feel like a working class man again. If you won't got that money behind you, you won't get nothing, you know. It's, you think, oh, a job will come up, but it doesn't. And you are losing your self-respect every day. It's reckoned the valley became richer to the tune of four million pounds when the pit shut. Investment councillors came in to advise the men how to best use their money. Their stories of fleets of Austin metros appearing in the streets. Foreign holidays boomed but some believe the miners were bribed into selling their jobs. Our men didn't uh, knock me down in the rush to get their lump sums then, because they realised that uh, we were losing work for the valley. We had fought for a year, and we weren't there to go and grab the lump sum, but we were told that the strike was over, that the coal board intended to close the pit. We had no choice. But if you have a look at the situation within the valley and what use the lump sums were put to, you will find that in the main, they have been put to use by ensuring that the young people, their sons and daughters, not only got dole money, but they are getting the extra support from the lump sum that they received from the National Coal Board. My husband was 50 when he finished. And he came out on a pension scheme. They said, you never have to work again. We look after you, you know. And it all came down to £65 a week, which is nothing. I mean, you can't... You, you're either going to do one or two things. You're either going to leave your money where it is and live off your £65 plus your interest. That means you can't do anything at all. You were just scraping by. I mean, it's wrong to say we are poor. None of us are poor because we all manage, because we live in a community that's, that's a low-cost community. I mean, but we couldn't think about moving anyway. We can't get on our bikes and move. Where are we going to move? I mean, you know, for a start, the, the houses at the moment are averaging about 20,000 up here. That's the maximum, you know. And if we move anywhere else, we're not going to get anything under about 50,000, 60,000. We haven't even got that much redundancy to put the balance of it. You can't, you can't go getting into debt, not at 50 years of age. 
You can't think of Odette at that age. But what about the spending sprees which people were meant to have gone on when the, uh, the compensation came through? I d no, I don't think so. Oh, silly talk. People had money, but they're not fools. You're not, you're not uh, giving uh, the, the people in the valley are not fools. They're not throwing it away. I mean, plus they are, you know, it's some luxury or something, you know, what they wanted and I always waited for it. I think the majority of them, the, their first priority it was um, settling their mortgages. Mm. You know, mm. doing house improvements, vital house improvements now, nothing, nothing fancy, and then trying to exist the best they could. What did you get for the focus? For many a minor now, leaving the pit isn't something to be dreaded, to be welcomed. I had my, uh, Lord Issel. Come the first boss did. Did well, you want to leave? Yes, I did. Do you apply for it? I did. What well, they done, we had a general meeting on a Friday. And on a Monday then they asked us if we could go into the personnel manager and tell him what we'd rather do, transfer or finish. The majority said finish. I think out there a lot of them, eight hundred, possibly or forty six said they wanted transfers. Out of them they were youngsters. The rest of us said no, enough's enough. How long is that money going to last you? Well, time I pay off my mortgage, buy a little few things that I need, a car. I'll need a car, it's essential, and help me to get another job. I don't think it'll last me long. I it's not going to make you a rich man? Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. Well, I feel sorry for them poor innocent boys. I've got to do the same that I went through. They're going to have a vote of 12 much enjoyment. They're going to see a little bit of this and a bit of that. And when their money's gone, they're going to be scraping on the door. And after they have all out for 12 months, they'll have nothing left. The international pit in Blangarrow shut more than 20 years ago. The villages are still waiting for something to be put in its place. Meanwhile, the Garrow pit continues to attract the rubbish and the rats. Some see it as symptomatic of the way the valley's been left to deteriorate. There's just no more character left in the valley. You've got your individuals that, that will never die, but the whole life in the industry is just gone. The all the NCB has ever done in our valley is to take away. It have never give anything back, and I don't think it ever will. The spoil it have left around the valley here, and it's a beautiful valley, it's just derelict. It looks so unpleasant. Everything just looks so bad. And after all, we, we pay rates just the same as anybody else in the country. We want our place to look as nice as anywhere else. The view I've got is disgusting. It's just simple desolation of landscape. <coughs> it's um, the quarry buildings, uh, every, everything about the quarry just be flattened to the ground and left as it is. We've been infested by rats. And I mean infested uh, for months and months. Well, it's just starting to slack off a little now. There's still a few about, yeah? But I would say for nine, nine to 12 months, we were infested by rats. Rent to kill were living up here. I can't repeat on camera what I would like to say to this government and to the coal board for the desolation of my valley. And to the likes of people like Lady Windsor and Abernant, good luck and God bless you because you need it all. A public meeting later this week will discuss how new life should be breathed into the valley. Not everyone's despondent about Garrow's future. I'm convinced of this, that Blind Garrow will be one of the places that when people will say, you wouldn't think a, a pit had been there. It will be, it will be a beautiful area if we can take out the, the spoil heaps as mar in our village now. Because I don't think as a house in Blangaro that looking out through the windows, you or one of the windows in the house, you can't see a tip. Have a look around now, and if you see empty house, buy it. Because you're young enough to see the, see, see the uh, advantages on what Blangaro will look at. You've got the mountains behind you now, easy walk-ups, and you can, you can go on top there. Within a half an hour of getting on top, you can look into five different valleys. I, I, I've taken uh, children up there, well, Nebu's children and my own grandchildren, and they'd always say, now, let's go up the mountain where we can look in the five, val five different valleys. It's beautiful up here. Yeah? It's quiet. Oh, you. It's 
quiet. Oh, oh it's quiet. It's unbelievable, uh, quiet. I, you know, I used to hear the birds on the square yeah. in Puttingham uh, when I used to walk to work. Uh, I get up early in the morning now and I walk. I can hear the birds, but I can't hear the clank of the engines. I can't hear the compressor go in. I can't hear nothing. And I don't think it's right, uh, to be honest with you. And uh, same as when the compressor, uh, when they stopped the coke ovens in oh, Falda, wow. the people opposite couldn't sleep because it was so quiet. Mm. And uh, it does affect you. The valley's gone awfully quiet. When you look out of the window and the pit is gone, you're no longer seeing it after it being so much a part of your life for so long, what do you think? What I do regret is that they've torn the pit down They've replaced it with nothing. And that I'm bitter about. Because surely there should have been work replacement prior to the closing, closing of the colliery so that our youngsters could have work. There's your damage. And if you go and see it now, the scar is on the valley. The scar of four pits gone and nothing to replace them. That's the scar. And the scar is not only a physical scar on the valley itself, but as far as in the hearts of the people as well, where they have not been looked after. After giving a life of service to the community, in the war, in the pit, and generally in the culture, in the coyas, in the rugby, and then to be put out like dogs. Terrible, terrible. Over 1,500 jobs will go at Abernant and Lady Windsor. The people of the Garrow have seen it all before. They really don't know what's ahead of them. In they don't. Way? Because when we were talking about the, the colliery closing up here, and everybody thought, oh, we'll be all right. You've got all this money. You're going to do this. You're going to... And all of a sudden, you realise, I mean, you know, two years, two years, I think, it is a past now since it was closed, and it's not going anywhere. It was big money to us at the time when you were talking to the big money. But when it came down to the nitty-gritty, it was nothing. It was a pittance, a pittance they gave us. They're not going to lose their spirit, you, you take that from me. They won't lose their spirit. They might grumble a bit at some archer, but they won't lose their spirit. It's born in them, and it's bred in them, and that's that. They'll come out on top. Two years of money, we add, if you, if you add it all out. And it just dwindles the bills and what have you, you know, because I honestly think that if they are, do take their uh, redundancy money, I think the lot of them will be sorry. My advice to the boys from Lady Windsor will be to fight for new industries to come in within the valley. Not get on your bike and go to Kent or the Midlands. Hey, they blow, blowing down trees there, poor buggers. I'm sorry for them, by the way. I really am. Uh, but not to go there, but to keep our community alive by going out and searching to bring industries within the valley. I don't know how they're going to do it. They are younger than me. But I believe that that's their task, to ensure that they keep this valley alive. 